hey, hey guys, how's it going? I hope all of you are doing great today. Check it out guys, today we are back again in our survival world, ready to do some surviving and to tackle a brand new project, that's right, because in today's episode we are starting a slime farm. We have found four slime chunks right next to each other in a gigantic square and today we are going to dig the whole thing out, build the platforms where the slimes can spawn and then also start on the killing mechanism so that we can start collecting all of our slime. So I hope you're excited and I hope you're ready and if you're not, you know what to do. Grab your popcorn and grab your favorite designated beverage and I guess let's get this episode started. Alright guys, so it's been a while since we were in our survival world, but I'm pumped guys. I'm in the survival mood and I'm ready to tackle a brand new project today. So like I mentioned in the introduction, today we are starting on a slime farm. So the first thing we had to do was actually find our slime chunks because we couldn't just use any old slime chunk. We needed four slime chunks directly next to each other, forming a huge 32 by 32 block square. So to find those chunks, what I did was use a program called Amidst, which basically loads up a top-down bird's eye view of your entire world so that you can see stuff like biomes, villages, strongholds, and most importantly, you can also see slime chunks. After a bit of looking around, we found a 2x2 area, so uh, four slime chunks in total. Gosh, two by two is not five, yeah? <laughs> and yeah, that, that area is around, I think, what, a thousand or two thousand blocks away from our island. Which is perfectly fine, guys, if we travel through the nether, of course. Once we got there, we set up our little storage area, and then it was time to mark out the perimeter of the chunks. To find the chunk borders, I used the F3G shortcut, which basically shows you an outline of the chunks which you're standing in. This made it easy to first of all find the corners of the areas which we are gonna have to dig out, but yeah it also just made it a lot easier rather than checking the coordinates the whole time and trying to find where the chunk starts and where it ends. Unfortunately a small part of the chunks are in the ocean, but honestly, that is perfectly fine, guys. I think we're quite experienced right now in draining water from somewhere where we don't want it, I guess. <laughs> now, I think at this point, it is a good, Id good idea to talk about the design of the farm, I guess. What we are going for here is pretty much a modified version of Il Mango Slime Farm. For those who don't know Il Mango, he's basically the go-to guy for efficient and redesigned mob farms. And also flying machines and amazing redstone designs, guys. So I guess go check him out, guys. It's really awesome. Anyways, what he has created is a super efficient slime farm in a one chunk area, which produces somewhere around 18,000 slimes in an hour or something crazy like that. The basic principle of the mob farm is that you have a bunch of platforms for slimes to spawn on, which then get lured off of the edge by having iron golems strategically placed around the outside of the farm. The slimes then try to pathfind towards those iron golems, but then fall down off of the platforms that we built and then get killed using magma blocks all the way at the bottom. We're then going to have a hopper minecart going back and forth underneath those magma blocks to collect all of the drops and then just unload them somewhere so we can store them for later on when we need them. So that's the theory guys. One criteria for such high spawn rates, you know the 18,000 slime farms, uh, slime farms? The 18,000 slimes in an hour is that all of the blocks above the farm have to be removed. So it's not enough to just dig down to Y39, which is where slime starts spawning, build some platforms all the way down to bedrock and then leave the biome intact at the top. We really had to remove everything all the way down to bedrock level. And this took a while guys, yeah, this, this did take a while. I think the entire digging process took close to somewhere around five hours or something like that which was still fun guys. <laughs> All I did was I had to just put on some good music, set up a haste to beacon, and I guess just enjoy the grind guys, yeah. 
I really don't know what it is with mining in Minecraft, but yeah, it's just so satisfying just breaking all those blocks in a short amount of time. But maybe that's just me, guys. I don't know. <laughs> Another thing which we also had to think about in future episodes is where we're gonna store all of the dirt and stone that we collected from mining this whole area out. I think in total now we have somewhere over 20 double chests of stone right now or something like that. It's, it's more than we will ever need guys, but I don't know about you, but I just have that feeling we have to somehow store it in a cool storage area or something like that. And yeah, I guess the one that we have right now is just really too small right now. I think we have in total, what, 10 double chests? And I think at least three quarters of those are already filled up? I don't know, well, yeah. You know what, we'll, I guess we'll cross that bridge once we get there, guys, in future episodes. Let's not, let's not think about that now. <laughs> oh, and before I forget, one thing I also want to address is, I know that Mumbo has also started on pretty much the same project a few episodes back, and he also used Il Mango's design in his video. Now, it was actually a stroke of luck that we both started on a slime farm at around the same time, since I actually started recording and building this entire thing before he released his videos on it. I didn't even know that he was working on it, which I guess is pretty cool. Yeah, I just want to get that out of the way, because I know some of you will want to accuse me of copying him, to which I can only say, guys, even if we are working on very similar projects right now, honestly, at the end of the day, we'll both have completely different looking farms and storage areas, so yeah, I hope that you still enjoy the content from both of us, I guess. So yeah, <laughs> I guess now that that's all out of the way, let's talk about what is going to happen in the next episode. So I obvi obviously wasn't able to fully complete the farm in one episode, guys, since in total I think I've spent around, I think i say like 10 hours or something like that on this project, including the preparation time and all of that kind of stuff. And I don't want to keep you waiting for another week or something like that until you get a video. Instead, I'm going to be splitting up this into two parts. The first one being the farm, which includes all of the digging that you see right now, creating the spawning platforms which we will be building, putting in the iron golems, and finally also putting down the magma blocks so that we're also able to kill the slimes when they drop off of those platforms. And in the next episode, my plan was to work on how we're going to transport all of the slime farms to a storage area perhaps, and of course, I guess, build that storage area. The idea I had was to perhaps have a viewing area or something like that above the farm, perhaps in one of the side walls or something like that, which is pretty bare right now, I guess, and then have a huge storage system in there, which basically acts sort of as an AFK spot, I guess, to get all of the slimes to spawn so that we can stock up on a whole bunch of slime walls. I don't know guys, I think it would be really cool to have a sort of item elevator as a centerpiece and then have all of the chests put around that that thing or, or I don't know. However, one thing which I am certain which we are going to have is a large nether portal which will help us travel to and from our base a lot easier than what, what we have to do right now. I mean, it's not too difficult to get here right now since we do have an elytra. I think in the end you only need like three rockets. However, it does take, I think, a minute or something like that at least to fly over here. But even if that wasn't the case, I think it's just a lot more stylish to have a sweet nether portal open up into this awesome storage area. At least that's what I think. You'll have to let me know. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to be it from me. So if you liked the video, Please smash the like button guys, it really means a lot to me and it really does motivate me to keep spending all of this time on these epic survival episodes. And of course shows me that, that you like these videos of course. <laughs> oh, and also guys, leave your build ideas for the storage area or anything else which we can build in this area in the comment section guys. It's always great to hear your feedback and who knows, you know, sometimes I also need some inspiration from you guys. However. That's gonna be it from me, and I can tell that we're pretty much at the end of the video, so I guess it was a bit more of a rambly episode. So I guess I'm just gonna say, how about you guys sit back, relax, and 
I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.